Hey, I'm Ryan and I'm an audio engineer. Normally on this channel I'm teaching tutorials, but today I wanted to review my experience with Apple's new spatial audio. After a day of listening to a whole bunch of different tracks through different headphones and setups and everything else, my experience was pretty surprising actually. So I want to share my experience with that and let you know as well whether or not I plan to keep using spatial audio. Before I share my personal thoughts on this, I wanted to show you quickly how you go about turning this on if you want to try it out yourself. If you have a subscription to Apple Music, you can just go into your iPhone's settings, scroll down to Music, and then under the audio section you can see the options for Dolby Atmos. Now you can force this to always be on and it'll just give you this little pop-up to say that not everything is supported with Dolby Atmos. You can also choose this automatic mode which will use it when you've got AirPods and things like that that are officially supported and when you're not using officially supported headphones it won't use it. To make sure you're experiencing it just set it to always on when you want to use it. While we're in the settings I just wanted to quickly mention lossless audio as well and I'm not going to spend long talking about this but this is where you go to turn it on. You can toggle it on at the top there and then you can choose it independently for either streaming over data, streaming over Wi-Fi or downloaded content. Now if you go into one of these options like the mobile data you can see how much data it uses per three minutes on. This is a helpful chart to know what's going on. I won't be using these kinds of data costs to listen to lossless music but I'll have it on when I'm on Wi-Fi at home. Now I talked about lossless audio recently and I don't want to rehash everything now but I'm going to link below in the description an NPR test you can take which shows you some lossless tracks as well as some MP3s and lets you see if you can tell the difference between them. So that's a great way to listen back and forth between different tracks and see if you can tell the difference and that'll let you know if it's worth switching to Apple Music just for lossless audio or not. I personally think it's nice to have but it's not a deal breaker either way. But that is definitely enough about lossless audio, I want to talk about spatial audio. Quickly, if you're wondering what spatial audio is, it's using Dolby Atmos which is a standard that's being used in cinema mixing and has been for a few years now. I don't want to get too much into the detail but it allows the mixing engineers to place objects within a space and move them around that way. So rather than thinking of discrete channels like a left and a right channel which you'd normally have in stereo, you place objects within a space and then Atmos is decoding that however it's being listened to. Now particularly with the music today we're talking about listening to it through headphones, it's not supported on Apple TV or on Mac yet so it's harder to get it through a 5.1 system or something like that so for the most part you're probably going to experience it through some headphones. I also wanted to mention this isn't the kind of thing where if you turn your head it's changing what you hear, that would be a pretty weird way to listen to music. Really what it's doing is it's simulating there being a bit more space and a bit more width in the mix. If you listen through you will start to notice some things sound like they're coming from up higher or further away a little more than you would get in a stereo mix. So it is achieving that and actually surprisingly well. And that moves us into my experience with spatial audio. Now before I talk about my experience at all I just want to put a disclaimer out there. This is all personal preference. We're talking about how we like songs to be mixed and how we like instruments to sound. There's not really a right or wrong way to do that. And so if I really liked something that you hated, that's okay. And if I really disliked something that's your favorite thing ever, that's okay. We have different preferences on stuff, but I'd love to have a discussion and hear what you think as well. But these are my thoughts on, on my experience of using Apple Music in Spatial. Now I started off by jumping into Apple's playlist called Made for Spatial and listened to a few of the kind of biggest tracks on there. So the first thing I did is with Spatial Audio turned off, I listened to Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. I wanted to start with it off just so I could get a reference point for how the song sounds and then I switched it on and listened again. And honestly my experience with the song was really underwhelming. As soon as Dolby Atmos was on it felt like the vocals were a million miles away from me, the drums lost all of their punch and it just kind of felt like the song was hollow. It was pretty strange and it kind of made me think that this whole thing was going to be a disaster and I listened to a couple other pop tracks and kind of experienced similar things. I found that the vocals felt further away, they didn't feel as present and just the whole mix seemed to lack punch. But as I continued scrolling through playlists of spatial audio tracks I came across Kraftwerk and listened to The Man Machine and honestly this sounded incredible. Just sitting with headphones on listening to the song was one of the best music listening experiences I've actually had in a long time. I really enjoyed listening to it. It just gave space to all of the synths that were going on. It felt like there was a whole lot more life in the track than in the stereo version. If you haven't listened to the song I definitely recommend you check it out. The Man Machine by Kraftwerk. And that kind of brings me to my first point about this as I really found it hit or miss. Those first few songs, the big pop songs I listened to, I really didn't enjoy. But then I came to Kraftwerk and it was awesome. I listened to some orchestral stuff as well, The Planets Suite by Gustav Holst has been done in spatial audio, so I had to listen to Jupiter which I really like and it sounded great. You can kind of imagine how this would work well for an orchestra, there's good space, it allows you to separate the instruments from one another, it really worked well in this context. 
So now I'm thinking I'm going to have to eat my words and actually spatial audio is awesome. It's the best thing ever. And then I went over to the rock playlist and I think the first song that came up was Sugar We're Going Down by Fall Out Boy. So there's a bit of my childhood coming back, but it sounds terrible. I did the same thing again where I started with Dolby Atmos off, listened to it and then turned it on and all of a sudden the vocals just disappeared. The guitars were harsh, the drums sounded like they were in this massive chamber. Just everything sounded wrong. There was really nothing that I liked about the mix in Dolby Atmos. As I listened through a few more rock tracks, uh, it just kind of sounded the same. I don't know what's going on, if it's a limitation of the way that Atmos works, or if it's just something about the way that these mixing engineers have worked. Uh, part of me thinks that it's probably the technology, because I really didn't like pop or rock stuff in this setting. It seems to me that the more full the production is, the worse it translates to this. In order to get that wider effect, they're probably doing some weird doubling stuff and playing with phase to try and get it sounding wider. And sorry if that's a bit nerdy for you, but it just starts sounding hollow and weird. But when I was listening to more spacious stuff, like I already mentioned, or actually some pop that's just a little emptier as well, maybe some ballads, there was something quite nice about it. The reverbs on voices sound bigger, there's a bit more space around stuff, so in certain songs that does work. But when there's too much going on, it just sounds a little chaotic and doesn't really work. Now, as I've already said, this is totally my preference. I'm not saying you can't enjoy it, and if you've listened to Sugar We're Going Down and think it's the coolest thing ever, that's great. I'd love to actually hear from you what you've been listening to and how you've found it. Because this is a subjective thing, we have different experiences of it. But yeah, my experience of big productions is that they're not great. The last thing I did was spend some time listening to jazz, and this was actually quite nice. I think a good example is if you go and listen to Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers, Quick Trick is a good song to listen to from them. It sounded really cool. There was good separation between the instruments. I liked it a lot more than the stereo mix. So I'm definitely not trying to be a hater at all on this technology. I think it's really cool, and there are some uses of it that are great. There are just a lot that don't work as well. So that was my experience with using spatial audio. I'd be keen to hear how you found it, but that leaves me with the question of, am I gonna leave spatial audio turned on? And honestly, nah, I'm, I'm gonna turn it off. And this is, again, not me hating on it. It's just so inconsistent, so hit or miss. I don't wanna put on a song that I like and hate the mix so much that I either have to skip the song or go into the settings and turn settings off. I want it to just work however it is. And so just your standard stereo stuff is just more consistent. I know it's going to sound the way I like it. And so that's how I'm going to leave it set. But there are definitely going to be albums that I want to listen to in spatial audio. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to sit down and listen to Kraftwerk's whole album. It just sounds so good. So I'm definitely not saying don't use this, but I don't think I want it on all the time. I don't want to deal with that inconsistency. But hey, if you disagree with everything I've just said, I'd love to hear your experience with it. So let me know in the comments how you've found it, what songs you've really enjoyed, what songs you've hated. I'm just keen to share some experiences and see how everyone's found it. I appreciate you checking out the video anyway. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.